Dennis Clements was ready for an adventure. He's always uh, been an adventurer, uh, wanderlust, big time. That's where his heart is, really, is the adventure. And the more rugged, the better. I wanted a change in my life. I was ready, especially since the death of my mother. I felt kind of numb. I felt like getting away might be good. It might allow me to find times of refreshing. Dennis prepared his 32-foot sailboat in Virginia and set sail for the Bahamas. Two days into his trip, the weather changed. Dennis sailed into a massive storm. Conditions had become quite treacherous. That was the worst storm I'd seen. I had seen other storms. Uh, the problem with this one was is that the wind built and then shifted. Rogue waves struck with incredible force, breaking a hole in the side of the sailboat. I was thrown across the cabin, uh, landing on my right shoulder, which I thought I broke at that time. Uh, and I was deluged when the water came pouring in, flooding the boat. I lost all electrical power on board. Uh, the engine would not start. The steering autopilot had failed. It locked up the steering. I was unable to control the boat. To see that hole in the side of the boat and to know that the storm was continuing to build and the conditions were getting worse, it, it left me totally vulnerable to anything. And I knew then I was really in trouble. Dennis battled the elements for four days. It's getting dark, and I'm looking up, and I have to tell you, I had never seen conditions like this in my entire life. I remember looking up as, as the boat rolled over in these seas and seeing waves that I was convinced were 50-foot waves. And there's a certain horrible beauty to all this. It was beautiful, but it was killing me. And I looked over, and the, and the beacon was on. The light was blinking, and I had not turned it on. And to the best of my knowledge, it was not a self-activating EPIRB. It was a manual deployment. And so I looked at that, and I almost turned it off. And it's like I hear a voice in the back of my mind that says, you didn't turn that on, don't turn it off. I did not want to give up. But it, I started to realize that I wasn't going to make it. The Coast Guard picked up the distress signal and dispatched a C-130 plane over his location. They also called Dennis's wife, Mary. They basically says, yes, we received a distress signal. They says, we know he's off at the coast of uh, North Carolina. If he has a distress signal, if Dennis Clements has a distress signal, this is serious. Friends, family, and local churches began praying for Dennis's safety. Yet for the moment, his situation only got worse. The pilot of the C-130 told Dennis they would not be able to get a helicopter to his location for several hours. I got on the radio and I told him, I said, I don't think I'm going to last for several hours. And that's when he told me he would drop some life rafts. The rafts missed his position by several hundred yards. As the plane flew away to refuel, an enormous rogue wave capsized his boat. Dennis was thrown into the ocean. When I managed to get back to the surface, there was my sailboat, damaged and halfway flooded. I saw the wind catching the sail, and the boat sailed off and left me there. I had nothing. I tried desperately to catch that boat, and it sailed off and left me alone in the dark. And I knew that I was going to die there. I said, Lord Jesus, I'm going to trust you until I take my last breath. And that wouldn't be very long. It was only going to be a matter of minutes or at most a few hours before the temperature and the water and the exposure I'd been through. I would just gradually slip into unconsciousness and I would drown. For the first time in my life, I found myself in a situation where I could do nothing. Dennis swam aimlessly in the dark 250 miles from shore. Then, an unexpected jolt. I bumped into a capsized life raft that was floating in the dark with no lights. I bumped into it. I could have swam within 10 feet of this thing and never seen it as I blundered around out there. 
being tossed on the waves. Within a few hours, a Coast Guard helicopter dropped a rescue diver into the water. He pulled Dennis into the basket, and then he hoisted him into the chopper. He was taken to the USS Eisenhower, where Navy doctors treated him. Amazingly, his body temperature was 98 degrees. I, I had always trusted God to save my soul. Ever since he came, became, you know, Lord of my life, I trusted him to save my soul but I never really thought he would save my life. Dennis gives thanks to the men and women of the Coast Guard and Navy who perform their jobs with excellence. And he believes he wouldn't be here today if it weren't for the prayers that saved his life. God used that life raft that had been dropped by the Coast Guard and that Navy diver that came down in there and got me. He used those men to save me, but it was God who saved me. I'm counting on him. Because I learned there, I learned there, that everything I did amounted to nothing. Everything I did. And it all came down to me floating alone in the dark. I'm trying to get up every morning and re remind myself that I'm breathing again. I'm still breathing. I'm going to trust you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to trust you today.